4K version of the Atom TV Studio, DaVinci Resolve 18.5, and two IP-based video converters. That is a lot to cover right now. It's now 2023 and it's all about AI and digital video transmission. Well, so it seems. This is DigiPro Tips. I'm Andy Edmondson and here we work smarter, not harder, because it gives you more time to be creative. So Pro Tippers, Blackmagic Design have released a bumper crop of products over the weekend at NAB, and they all seem to be geared towards those two things I just mentioned, either AI or IP video. Why? Well, it's because where all of the hyper competition are going. So it makes sense, really. All right, let's just go straight into it because there is a lot to cover. So let's start off with Resolve 18.5. And let's first say this is a beta. This is not the official release. So there are still lots of bugs going to be coming out with this. But there is so many features that they are releasing with this. It's going to be a big, big update. So yeah, the DaVinci Neural Engine, the, the AI of DaVinci is being used for all sorts of different areas of Resolve now. And it is really, really starting to become evident that AI is where all of the NLEs are going. However, something that is not AI and something that is a really clever feature and will have other NLEs quaking in their boots is the ability to have remote monitoring of your session. All you need is a Blackmagic ID and a session code and you can view the output or the editing session that's going on from Resolve. You don't need to worry about IP addresses or port forwarding or any of that. And interestingly, trying to steal a slice of Frame.io's integration with Adobe, Blackmagic Cloud Workflow now has the ability for presentation mode, which allows users to write comments with time-stamped markers. Does that feel familiar at all? A really interesting feature in the effects side is this relight effects. It allows you to add virtual lights into a scene to change the environmental lighting to fill in the shadows or completely change the mood of the scene. There are three new menus in the cut page, but also scene cut detection is now enabled from the cut page too. In both the cut and edit pages, you have a new feature which allows automatic transcription into subtitles. And again, hot on the heels of Premiere Pro's latest release, which has text-based editing, Resolve now has speech to text editing that has been added in the transcribe feature, which automatically transcribes your video and audio clips. The support for uploading directly to TikTok and also the ability to export in vertical now as well. And there's an interesting new feature for audio using AI, which will allow you to automatically classify your audio clips to like group them basically so that if you're unfamiliar with the source material, it will classify them to make it easier for you. There's an absolute ton of features that I haven't even mentioned yet, but I have not got time to go through all of them. So you really should go check it out. As I said, it's in beta, so there might be bugs, but it's available for you to try. Let me know how you get on. I'm sure there'll be an absolute ton of reviews about this, but there's so much to see and do in here that we can't cover it all. Next up on the Blackmagic Extravaganza is the Studio 4K8, or I should say the ATEM TV Studio 4K8. Now, as I mentioned in a previous episode of Digi Pro News, which you can view up there, the HD8, or the HD8 ISO as well, I was bewildered how there wasn't a 4K version, an Ultra HD version of this switcher. And it appears they were just holding out for NAB to release it. But the new 4K in most regards is the same as the HD8 and the HD8 ISO, but it allows now for eight uh, 12G SDI inputs and 12, I haven't got enough fingers for 12, 12, 12 G SDI outputs. There are four 10 gigabit ethernet ports on the back and that's about as far as it goes in terms of 4K compatibility. Now that does sound like a big bump up from the HD8, but in my reading on this, I still can't find anywhere where it says that you can actually record internally those 4K inputs. I can only see that it records internally and it will record in a eight um, and it will record in H.264 format, but I can't see any description of resolution. I, it also says that it will record in 10-bit 422, which is great for color depth and precision, but I don't know that it can actually record 4K internally. It also says that on the outputs, those 12G outputs, 
that those can be used for recording. So I'm thinking that using some of the other Blackmagic products that can capture at 4K, that might be where they're going with this. You can't actually record internally and have it on the Blackmagic cloud or um, accessible via local network. You have to use another product to be able to record the 4K output. We'll need to wait for the reviews to see if that's true or not. The 4K8 does also have four chroma keyers, two downstream players, super source, and two media players. So lots of graphics and in-switcher functionality that you would expect from a broadcast switcher. The 4K8, just like the 12G hub, the 12G video hub that I mentioned in a previous video, um, has the ability to cross convert. So whatever your setting on the TV studio is, so if you've set it to HD, all SD, HD and Ultra HD inputs will be converted to HD so that everything is at the same standard. It's also unclear, going back to the 4K workflow, whether the remote functionality to have remote camera feeds come in, um, whether they can send 4K to the Switcher 2. Because we know that you know you can get 4K out of the cameras like the 6K Pro, uh, Studio 6K Pro, but we don't know whether you can remotely send 4K from them. The Atom TV Studio 4K8 is available from July and is starting at $4,595. Now, what was this IP-based video transmission that I was talking about at the start? Well, if you've been a fan of Digi Pro Tips, then you'll know that I've covered NDI quite extensively and the ability, NDI is the ability to transmit visual and audio data over a local network. Well, that's now been put into a approved standard for broadcast and it's called 2110 IP. Now, Blackmagic Design are getting on the bandwagon early and they have announced a couple of products that allow for 2110 IP capture and also transmission. The first of these is a 3x3G 2110 IP converter. It's a 3G SDI converter that has three SG SDI inputs on the back plus SDI loopouts and outputs, but it also has a 10 gigabit ethernet port. Why? Because it's going to take those three 3G SDI inputs and convert them into 2110 IP video. Those inputs can then be broadcast on the network and picked up anywhere else on the network as 2110p, as 2110 IP video. That's a lot to say, isn't it? These things are small, so small in fact that you can actually fit three of them in a 1U rack shelf and have potentially up to nine, nine uh, inputs, 2110 IP inputs. Now they are HD and they accept feeds in 1080p up to 60 frames per second. They're coming out in June for around about $595 each. And furthering Blackmagic's move into IP based video, is the new Decklink IP HD. Now, many of you will have used the PCIe based Decklinks before. It allows the ability for SDI, HDMI input, like capture into a computer. And so you can record an output of a different source via SDI and HDMI um, on your computer. But now they're making an IP based version so that you can capture and play back that 2110 IP video as well. With SDI and 10 gigabit ethernet port, it can capture either SDI or 2110 IP video, and it can capture that in ProRes, DNX HD, or even 10 bit uncompressed video so that you get pixel perfect replication of the original source. Now these are coming to the market in June and they are retailing for around $345 each. So the move to IP video and AI based production has started and it's moving fast. If you want to know more about how quickly AI is coming for the design world, then you might want to check out what Adobe is doing with Firefly. 